understanding how to extrude, texture, and animate the GPT logo using the powerful Element 3D in After Effects. Welcome everyone, I'm your host, Elias Arantopoulos. All right, so inside Adobe After Effects, I'll go ahead and set this up. I have already created a couple of solid layers here. So I will target the speech bubble and then head to Adobe Illustrator. I will marquee select the speech bubble shape. I'll copy this to the clipboard, head back to After Effects and then paste that in. Now I'll target the GBT solid layer here, head back to Illustrator select copy the logo and then paste that in all right now i'll go ahead under the layer menu create a new solid i'll give it a name of element 3d and i'll make sure that i make comb size and then click ok no need to have those visible doesn't really matter what matters is we go under the effect menu video copilots and i'll bring up the element 3d plugin right here under the custom layers and custom text and masks, I'll set the path layer one to be the speech babble and the path layer two to be the GPT logo and then click on the scene setup. Once we're here now inside the plugin, all I have to do is just click on the extrude button. And here is the first shape, the speech bubble, which means I'll double click, rename this, speech bubble to keep myself organized and this is the first shape for the second 3d model i'll right click duplicate this model double click on it and rename this to gpt and for the custom path i'll set this one to the custom path 2. now this is already has been created we just don't see it so i will target the speech bubble and on the z-axis i'll bring this back a bit i'm also going to increase the overall size of the speech bubble model and perhaps i'll bring it down a tad just a tad here something along those lines okay now under the tessellation i'll set the path resolution to be extreme so i have a nice resolution for both of these models and i'm ready to go to the next step and start texturing these two models so for texturing those 3d models i'll start with the gpt which means for the speech bubble i would toggle off its visibility and just concentrate on that so under the presets and the bevels and physical here i'll scroll down and apply the universal preset, bevel preset, to the whole GPT logo. Here it is. This is a great start here. I'm just going to go bevel by bevel and set some parameters here. So, for example, for the bevel one, the extrusion, I'll bring this up to, let's say, three something. And for the expand edges, I'll set this one to zero. The bevel size, I'll set this one also to zero and the curve also to zero now i'll target the second bevel here i'll bring up the extrusion to let's say 2.5 or so for the expand edges i'll set this one to one maybe for the bevel size i can increase this just a tad this one i'll set this one to zero and this one to zero as well and then our target the bevel three i'll increase that and that will be set to zero this stays the same for the bevel depth the one maybe i can increase it just a tad and the rest will be set to zero okay so things are looking good the only thing is that this is a little bit too thick so under the general GPT model here, I'll bring the bevel scale down to, let's say, one point something. You see, 
So I like what I see. This looks great. I'll keep that. And I'm ready to go to the next step and start texturing this speech bubble. For the second model, the speech bubble, I'll go ahead and toggle on its visibility. Back on the presets, bevels and physical, I'll scroll down till I get to the Oreo bevel preset. So I'm just going to click and drag this right on top of the speech bubble. As you can see here now, we have two bevel, the shiny and the white shiny, which means I'm just going to make some changes here. So I'll start with the shiny here and I'll set the extrusion to 0 0.7, expand edges to zero, bevel size to zero, depth, bevel depth to zero, and everything else set to zero. For the white shiny here, I'll start with the extrusion. I'm just going to up this just a tad. The expand edges will be set to zero. The bevel size, I'll up this one a little bit to 0 0.7. The bevel depth, I'm going for 1.5, and I'm going to zero the Z offset. That looks good, but I'm going to continue this still on the white shining, and I will enable the bevel outline. All right, now I need a little bit of a thickness here, which means I'll go ahead and increase the outline width. So for the outline width, I'm just going to set this one two point something that looks good we have a nice thickness here all right and i will scroll down i'm still on the white shiny here and under the basic settings here i'm just going to assign a diffuse color like a green color here and for the glossiness right now this is set to 58 i'm just going to bring this up to 70 and for the reflectivity, I'll assign a different color. I'll assign like a yellow color here. And I'll up the intensity to the tad, let's say 65%. So that is the first step, texturing the speech bubble model. All right, so things are looking fantastic so far. Great texturing. But I'll go ahead and take this to the next level and apply some custom textures inside the speech bubble, which is the shining bevel. So for that, I'll click on the textures and apply custom textures that I'm sharing with you inside the exercise folder. Now, just to give you an idea for the custom textures, I use the Crazy Bump, which is a texturing software that exports bump normal displacement and lighting maps from 2D textures. So in this case, for the diffuse, I'll click to load the texture and inside the textures folder. This is the one that I will apply for that. And basically what it's going to do is going to map the whole 3D geometry with these dots here. Now for the glossiness, which is basically the light that is scattered across the surface of a 3D model. I'll use the specular. We can already see some changes taking place. For the normal bump, that is the height or direction of the surface normals of a 3D model. I'll choose this one. And for the occlusion, that will make the 3D object look more realistic by simulating some soft shadows. I'll select this one right here and then click OK. All right, I'll go ahead and zoom in a bit to see some details here. So for this one, for the glossiness, I'll bring the glossiness down just a tad and definitely bring up the normal bump here because this is a little bit too pronounced. All right, that looks good. But how about if we actually apply an environment to both of these 3D models? So under the presets and the environment, another great plugin from Video Copilot, these backlight environments, 
In this case, I will apply this one right here. That gives us a lot of great reflections. But actually going to have more reflection inside the shining surface right here. So for that, still on the shining surface here under the reflectivity, I will apply this gradient. I'll click OK. Here's the gradient. The thing is, we don't see this. It is not pronounced so much. So I'm just going to scroll down a bit. And under the reflectivity, I'm just going to up the intensity to, let's say, 70%. You see, that looks great. Everything looks in order. Let me double check on the left view and make sure these models here intersect just a tad back on the perspective. It's exactly what I'm going to be with all these great reflections. And I'm ready to go to the next step and animate the whole logo. All right, so things are looking great. I'll go ahead and animate the entire logo. So in this case, under the layer menu, I'll go ahead and create a new 3D camera. For the type, I'll choose two nodes. For the lens presets, I'll go for 20 millimeter wide angle lens, and then I will leave everything as is. Now, primarily, I will be working with these three tools here, the orbit, the pan, and the dolly, with the keyboard shortcuts of one, two, and three. I am in the beginning of the timeline, so I'll press the letter P on the keyboard for the position property. I click on the stopwatch, and first I would dolly this in. I'll orbit a little bit. Pan this out here. Orbit again. I'll dolly this thing even more. Let's say around here. I'll move the current time indicator to, let's say, to two seconds. And I'll orbit this. To the other side, I would dolly this out. Maybe orbit this a little bit more. See around here. And then I'm just going to copy this keyframe, paste it three different times. Okay, so basically here, as you can see, I have identical keyframes. So for the last keyframe, I'll go ahead and have the rest in position pretty much. I will dolly this out, pan this to the scene, orbit it a bit so it's kind of straight. So let's go ahead and see the motion here. This is not ready yet. It comes in. It's going to stop. It's going to do this. Okay, so what I need to do here is right here on this keyframe, I'll press the letter J on the keyboard to go to this visible keyframe. And then under the animation menu, I'll change the interpolation from linear to a toggle hold keyframe. So between this keyframe and this keyframe, nothing's going to happen. Then the camera will start animating. So let me go ahead and show you here. If I was to stretch this out and press the space bar, all this time here between those two keyframes, is going to be a hold keyframe. So it's entirely up to you how much you want to hold. Let's say I'm going to hold up to here. Something along those lines. Let me play this again. And there you go. Maybe I, this can be a little slower. So what I would do now is mark you select this too. And then change the interpolation to is it is. And I'll do the same for this keyframes. I'll change the interpolation to is it is. And then I press the space bar for the round preview. And there you go. And this is exactly what I was aiming for. Hope that helps and thank you for watching.